Hey everybody, Tony J and Little Joan here with a hot take on Black Lives Matter. Why did Black Lives Matter get a nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize? Can anyone tell me why? I already know the reason. You know the reason. It's because the Nobel Peace Prize doesn't really mean much. I mean, Barack Obama basically got it because he's Barack Obama didn't actually do anything for peace. You gotta wonder what Alfred Nobel would think of his peace prize when he genuinely tried to promote peace and, you know, after he created, uh, what was it? Blasting caps and nitroglycerin or, I don't know, dynamite, I, I think he invented. I, one of those three. Um, and Black Lives Matter just continues to do Totally woke and insane things, in my view. Here's one of them here. San Francisco Unified School District labels acronyms as a symptom of white supremacy culture. You can see them here. Now, it doesn't mention Black Lives Matter in the article on Breitbart, but you, you can imagine this is supported by uh, Black Lives Matter. The San Francisco Unified School District, SFUSD, has determined acronyms a symptom of white supremacy culture. In response, its performing arts department will dump the ana uh, uh, acronym VAPA in favor of SFUSD Arts Department. You're, you're still using an acronym, aren't you? Aren't you using an acronym? I guess SFUSD doesn't make a word unless you call it sophisticated. The use of so many acronyms with the with the educational within the educational field often tends to alienate those who may not speak English to understand the acronym. Ha. Prove it. Prove it. That that sounds to me like an academic sat around <laughs> thinking of yet another thing they could change. Uh, not that they had any real life experiencing, experience doing that. Now, I'm sure people who struggle with English as a second language probably don't get acronyms. They probably don't get a lot of English words. So what? Like, that's the struggle of learning another language. It's, yeah, I wouldn't get acronyms if I went to, I don't know, France. They had an acronym for something. I don't speak French. So uh, they'd be lost upon me just like the French words would probably be lost upon me. Um, so, and this is according to a report by ABC7 News. So woke. So wonderful. Uh, and speaking of woke, again, not directly tied to Black Lives Matter, but TV history historian rejects nonsense over keeping statues. <laughs> Who Now, is he a TV historian, like a historian about television, or is he just a historian that goes on TV? Because RoboCop is an actual historian. Peter Weller, he's an actual historian. He has a degree, and he's been on the History Channel a bunch of times. So, I'm just saying. Um, Professor Oluskoga says statues such as those of slave traders are not useful ways of teaching history or explaining the values of previous eras. Well, that's an opinion. Um, but how can you back that up exactly? Instead, the historian argues they are continuing public, quote, validation of people who, quote, did terrible things. Well, it sounds like you're only interested in one thing they did. And it sounds like you're ignoring any good they may have done. You know, sometime in the future, it might be determined that, you know, people who eat meat are terrible people. That animals are capable of communication. We haven't figured that out yet, but like imagine a, a future in which they invent a device where you could actually directly talk to living animals and hear what they're thinking or actually have some sort of communication with them. So you can imagine that once you reach that point, 
that it would be nearly impossible for people to eat meat after that. Like after you communicate with them, you'd be like, well, we can't eat them now. We, we've talked to them, right? You couldn't eat something that you've talked to. So would that make all the people prior to that invention some sort of monsters, genocidal monsters because they ate animals? You could, I guess you could make an argue for, argument for that, but it'd be a pretty weak one because without the technology, you wouldn't know that they could communicate as deeply as maybe the invention would allow you to know. So he's asking us to judge people of the past by the standards of the present. And you can't. You simply can't. Um, you know... It, it's we have other technology and more education and a society that's not struggling just to st stay alive we have the luxury of thinking about these things now you didn't have the luxury of thinking you know about these sort of broader issues when you were just trying to stay alive when you literally have to hunt for your food every single night and when you have to farm just to live and if you don't farm correctly that you could end up with no food and die I mean that's a real preoccupation right um, you know the, 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 the settlers they'd had to go out in the west and build a home and build a farm and you know they didn't have a lot of scientific method to do that and they didn't have much in the way of technology to do that a lot of it was just elbow grease and a few few metal tools, right? Like an important one would be an axe. So what if you go to build your log cabin and your axe breaks like on the second day? Kind of screwed if you only got one axe. <laughs> you know, you could end up in God knows what, what kind of position then. Uh, you'd have to go all the way back to a town and try to beg for an axe, I guess, or buy one if you had any money. Um, you know, so... If these people just struggling to survive, just struggling to get to the next day, the next week, the next year, raise their families, you know, that they don't know about all this woke stuff. Are they horrible people? <laughs> Are they horrible people for maybe going along with certain cultural norms at that time in order just to survive? You know, these are this to me. These are the same sort of people that go. Well, you know, if I was around during the the, the, the bad guys of World War II were coming up, I would have stopped them. I would have protested. There were people who protested, and they were all killed. Uh, the White Rose, which I I mentioned a few times in videos, they were a peace group during the time of the bad guys of World War II, and they were executed. So, these guys, uh, people like this to me, they, they, they feel like they're just very pretentious and that they can make these pronouncements. Oh, you don't need those statues. You don't need those statues. They validate the wrong things. I know the right things. Yeah, history looks different in the rear view. Biden's America never fully lived up to his founding principles. Again, same sort of mindset it's like oh and and this is a total lie from joe biden it's just an absolute lie this is a guy who said in my view racist things all the time when he first started his career but they were culturally acceptable at that time not that i would condone them i was around during that time and reading some of the old quotes i was like oh he said that yikes i you know Back in the day when I was a little SJW, I would have been, ooh, ah, hey. You know, this is in the 70s. You know, I was a kid, and I would be like, oh, you can't say that. You know, he said the N-word, not the hard N-word, the other N-word. And, uh, you know, just as casual as you please. He knows what's right for the, that's what he said. I think I retweeted, somebody had a picture with the quote, 
Um, he said it. Joe Biden. Not somebody else. Joe Biden said that. Joe Biden, the guy who gave a eulogy at Robert Byrd's funeral. A guy who was actually in a racist organization down south with the White Hoods. That guy. He gave the eulogy for. Called him a good guy. Now, Bird had left the group by then, but, you know, uh, it's not exactly a ringing endorsement for wokeness that Biden has. His resume would automatically disqualify him by the wokey standards. And yet, he's not disqualified. It's because he's rich and powerful, and the wokeys love power, so they'll put up with him. But, uh, you know, that he says, oh, uh, the United States has never lived up to its founding principles. Mm, well, you certainly don't live up to any of them. You certainly violate the Constitution on a daily basis. And I could say a bunch of other things that YouTube would probably strike me down for. Uh, and, you know, he's a massive hypocrite with regard to his son, certainly. Uh, and his uh, crime bill. 90s crime bill which caused a lot of pain and suffering um, and yet this guy can stand up and say these things and uh, people actually believe him you know and, it, and it's all BS it's total BS Wokies he, and you know it I, I think the smarter ones of you know it but you'd rather have a guy lie to you than a guy like Trump who would say the hard truths that you go, ooh, la, 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 la. But um, now, according to the politician who nominated Black Lives Matter for the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, he's been attacked. Um, this weekend, I've received many, so many negative responses from individual Americans telling me Black Lives Matter is a violent and aggressive organization that they are deliberately using violence as a political communication tool and that nominating them for a Nobel Prize is quite insane. Yeah, it totally is. Um, but uh, Peta, Peta Edi, uh, has no plans to rescind the nomination. Um, this is probably a response into, the, there was a Norwegian who people labeled as far right. I don't know if the guy was far right. But he nominated Trump for the Nobel Peace Prize. Trump actually caused some peace. He actually negotiated peace deals, which seems to me like the one of the minimum qualifications for winning the Nobel Peace Prize, if you're going to put any kind of bar towards it. Uh, Trump actually has peace deals. Obama, no peace deal. Black Lives Matter, no peace deal. Obama bombed Libya and destroyed it as a country. Black Lives Matter uh, lit half the country on fire and uh, continues to endorse things like looting as reparations. Um, they're, they're, they claim to be a Marxist organization that wants to undo the nuclear family. I mean... That doesn't sound very peaceful to me. Trump getting a peace, getting Arab countries to recognize Israel and maybe ending uh, all the all the confrontations in in the Middle East or a lot of them. That sounds like the guy who should win the Nobel Peace Prize, objectively. You know, if you could set aside your TDS for ten friggin' seconds and just look at it objectively. I mean, obviously. Trump deserves the damn prize. <laughs> you know, and you could even say, well, it wasn't all Trump. Yeah, it was team. You know, Jared, I think Jared Kushner is being nominated now. Him and his, his one of his uh, team. Black Lives Matter? What peaceful thing have they done? Oh, we marched and raised our fist. That's not peaceful. The iconic, uh, the, the images are not peaceful. I was going to say iconography, I, I, iconography, not peaceful. A black power fist is not peaceful. Uh, it's angry. 
I mean, that's what it's supposed to be, right? It's not supposed to be, you know. I mean, it'd be different if it was a, an open hand, like a, a, a hand of friendship. It's not. Um, so, Black Lives Matter absolutely does not deserve the Nobel Peace Prize. But, uh, you know, the Nobel Peace Prize doesn't really mean anything anymore. They've been giving people who don't deserve it the Nobel Peace Prize for years. They, I think they gave it to Henry Kissinger, Yasser Arafat. I think I went through some of the list. They were pretty undeserving people. It's become a political tool for the establishment to say, ooh, we're very fancy and like peace. <laughs> you know, Barack Obama can point to that. Oh, there's my Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, it's just a hunk of metal for him. He's not actually done anything in that area. He hasn't actually changed people's lives for the better because of peace. He's it's just another politician. It's, it's just another lie. It's just another thing he could rack up on his resume and say, oh, look at that. I want it. I mean, it's like Andrew Cuomo getting an Emmy. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Talk about undeserving. That's not even in the ballpark of awards that you know, he should be nominated for. It shows that the establishment doesn't care. It, it, it's, it shows that the Nobel Peace Prize is, is part of the establishment and that they want to give it to Black Lives Matter. It's just another one of their ploys to push the woke agenda, which is currently, you know, not... It's currently making them enough money that they want to push it. When the trend dies... I think the trend is dying. I think part of the problem is these companies really feel like they can make a lot of money on it. And they look at Twitter way too much. And quite frankly, a lot of the co companies are so big and people have been locked down, they haven't really been able to protest with their dollar yet. But that's a coming. And as I've always said, you should be looking into that. Look at the products you buy. And if they, any woke companies on the list, stop buying them. Don't buy them and encourage others not to buy it. There's plenty of other products out there. You know, there's plenty of, you know, I, I don't hear Pepsi lecturing me uh, about wokeness. Now, they probably have a couple of woke ads, but Coke sounds pretty woke. So if you got to drink soda, I mean, personally, I don't drink soda anymore, but if you got to drink it, I got to think, eh. Pepsi, no Coke. Same thing with a lot of other things. I, I like Goya. I'm going to eat uh, my Goya now. I buy that for my salsa. It's pretty good. Pretty good stuff. I'm not going to buy any kind of woke salsa. You ain't going to push a bunch of wokeness on me. I'm not going to buy your product. Think about it. And I got to go cancel. That reminds me. I got to go cancel my Netflix. All right, we'll see you in the next video.